Before I start my commentary, I wanted to do a quick disclaimer. The subject matter in this commentary may be triggering to some, therefore viewer discretion is advised. I've battled with myself in regards to if I wanted to cover and share the story, but I decided that I wanted to do it in hopes that all essay survivors could come forward because it's never too late to come tell your story and get the justice you so rightly deserve. The following audio clip was shared on Facebook by Pothead and Drama Plan B. And in this audio, Jared Lasik, the founder of Adventures with Purpose, his sister comes forward to share a part of her story. Now I'm not gonna play the entire audio and the audio has been sped up. For everyone who doesn't know, Jared Lasix is the founder of AWP Adventures with Purpose. And he has been exposed and some very troubling evidence has come to the surface. Now I don't wanna discredit anything that Jared and his team have done because they have done some amazing things. They've brought a lot of closure to a lot of families, but this right here, this isn't good, you guys. Viewer discretion is advised. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Who am I speaking with? This is the cousin. This is the cousin. Okay. Um, and, and you don't have to, I, I, got, I got a banner up, so you don't have to show my face, your face or anything like that. We can just speak this way, okay? I see okay. I got private messages. You're, <laughs> you're doing everything correctly. Don't worry. Um, now, mind you, I, I can't confirm that you're hurt. And I honestly, I just want to, whatever you want to tell me, you talk and I'm going to shut up, okay? Honestly, I really don't know what to say. Tessie was asking me if I was going to name myself and I didn't want to. You don't have to. It, exactly. I feel like being that it's still an open case, but. Yes. I don't want to put anything out there that could cause don't. problems. No, don't. And I'm t as somebody who, yes, I'm a YouTuber, but I'm also a full-time social worker, and I know what court looks like. So don't name yourself at all, okay? So everything mm -hmm. that we say and I say here is alleged. I want to just kind of be mindful of that. Um, it, so you you put out those emails at the very least on the Reddit page? Um, I actually wasn't the one that put them out on the Reddit page. They were on a survivor group on Facebook. A survivor group of Jared? Um, no, it's a like a survivor group for SA victims. Okay. Oh, my gosh. One of the I, uh, people in the Reddit thread had actually done some research and they were really good at their research. And apparently I gave away a little too much information. They were able to like, oh, find yeah. everything, my name and everything. And they reached out to me and did everything tactfully. You know, they, they had my permission to put what they put out there. You are so fucking brave. Can I just say how brave you are? No, I like, appreciate you saying that. You are I so brave, girl. No, I, I just want to say <laughs> you are so brave. Okay. <laughs> Don't let anybody tell you different. You are so brave for speaking out. I appreciate you. And to clarify, I, I know everybody keeps asking, but I don't want anything other than justice from this. Okay. Okay. And this is just to, to be clear then, you, you emailed the company. Is that correct? I did. Um, I have successfully kept my distance from Jared personally and quite a bit of the family for the majority of my life to the point mm -hmm. where when people would ask me, hey, are you coming to the family reunion? My first question was, is Jared going to be there? And that was the deciding factor as to whether or not I went. Yeah. <clears throat> so I knew absolutely nothing about him. I had the issue with the, you know, with the whole funeral thing. And then yeah. and I, I was, I was just on Facebook reading random stories because I was, I was waiting for something and I had some time to kill and I was reading random stories and came across that story and it just hit home. And I won't lie, I seen red and I immediately found his website and I sent him that email. I was reading your, your email or that email. And I was, I, I can tell you, like, I felt I was getting so choked up um, as well. It was almost like, like all of us felt it here. All of us in the chat, all of us. Um, oh, well, I'm glad it's, it's legible because I was feeling such rage at that moment when I was writing it. I'm surprised anything even came out. Absolutely. I just want to like commend you for speaking out um, because you don't know everybody here is just so excited to hear you. Um, period. I honestly am just, I'm floored it even made it this far. I was really surprised. I was prepared for the worst. Yeah. Do you mind if I ask you if, is he like the black chief of the family? Like, I'm just trying to figure this out. I would hate to say it that way, but you know. <laughs> If you want 100% honesty, I wouldn't say no, he's the black chief of the family because he has always kind of risen to whatever it is he tried to do. So they've always respected that something that unfortunately is just a big part of our family. And so, they, you know, I don't, I don't know how to word it. Yeah, yeah. But it sounds like even on the yeah, narrative. Heard it, but whereas like Chessie and any of us that have actually spoken out and been truthful and said anything against the family, we're truly the black sheep. So we're the ones that have been pushed to the side and kind of outed. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. 
period. And so then I would imagine having to live this, you've been to therapy, you've been through all this. Yes, ma'am. To address it. Oh my gosh. How does it feel to have people say or try to discredit your story? I've kind of lived with that my whole life. That was nothing new. Oh my gosh, girl. <sighs> I mean, yeah, it didn't feel good. And, you know, obviously it wasn't a preferred outcome by any means. Nobody wants that to be the reaction to something that you've said, but it took a lot for you to even say in the first place. My God. Do you feel like, what outcome would you like from this? You know, I mean, did you expect them to be indicted on anything at this point? I don't know what I was truly expecting, to be 100% honest. Like I said, I was preparing for the worst for them to just contact me and say, I'm sorry, this case is too old. I'm not 100% sure we can do anything with this. I, again, haven't been in contact with the majority of my family for so long that I, I was not aware that I would have the people that came out and actually did back me. Back me. So I thought I was going to be completely alone in this. So it's all yeah. been a more positive experience than I expected. Right. Oh, man. And you have a lot of people that support you in the chat, by the way. My goodness. I appreciate you guys. Um, anything that you want to share with us uh, pertaining to the emails or like what was your, your moment when you were writing those emails? Where was your mind? I was so angry at first, but then as you can see by the dates on it, we didn't continue the conversation until the next day. And so I had a little bit more time to think about it. And that was when I just realized that this was my opportunity and I really needed to try to say what I had to say and see if I could get him to put anything in writing, even if just for my own sake. So that way, the next time somebody tried to tell me, oh, you're just being dramatic or, you know, you're being a prima donna or whatever else I've been called by the family, I actually had written proof and I could turn around and go, no, I'm sorry, but I have it. You can't tell me this anymore. You're going to be there, obviously, I guess, November 30th? He said that I don't have to be there. I don't particularly okay. want to have to be okay. there. I don't have to be, but I will be. Do you need help with attorney stuff? Like, are you good? This right now, um, because it is the criminal case, the state has taken it on. This is all them. This is Utah versus oh, Jared. Not me wow. versus Jared. That would only be if I were possibly going after money and did like a civil case. Would I require Absolutely. a lawyer at that point? Are they offering you advocacy, a victim's advocate or anything like that through the state? Both the state of Utah and the state of Nevada offered it to me, yes. Okay. But another question too, because I was just familiarizing myself with this. Um, so Utah, from when I looked online, they just lifted the uh, limitations, statute of limitations in 2017, is that correct? About with regards to child sexual abuse? I'm not 100% sure on the dates. Um, I only accidentally came across this again because of a Facebook ad. It said something about, were you molested in the Mormon church? Um, click here to see if a lawyer can help you out. And so I just kind of went down that rabbit hole. <laughs> when you got these, when you had like that email exchange, is that kind of too what motivated you like to kind of come forward more because now you had more solid like information as far as admitting? Absolutely. Okay. Jessica said, and I completely agree, you need to change your name from cousin to hero. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Period. Now, as I done my research for this, I must say the endless emails and messages were very compelling. Jared really has a way with his words. Um, it's kind of off to me, but you know, everyone has their way of communicating, and I guess this is his. But there was one email in particular that I wanted to share. And this is the email that Jared sent to his cousin. So I want to share that with you guys. And I'm curious to know what your thoughts and opinions are regarding this. Unfortunately, your desire to have a 46-year-old male live the mistakes of a 12-year-old simply is not realistic. Thank God we are not forever judged for our actions as youth. And I'm grateful that many of us cousins acknowledge and stop those sins which happen to us and those sins we once committed as a result of grooming. It is healthy for you to now be open and talk about the past. You, as a full-grown woman in your early 40s, are to be commended for facing and standing up to those actions which happened to you in your past. Spread awareness and stop the cycle as we cousins within the family have for our own children and grandchildren. Protect your own children and grandchildren as we have to help the world become a better place. We live in a society that acknowledges the mistakes made in the past, accepting those who have proven to change. My life holds no secrets and everyone in my office feels your pain and has seen this email string, for I do not filter my own emails. They know me for the man that I am and not the mistakes of a 12 year old who learned to recognize the cycle and break the cycle as many of us cousins did. You are younger and not yet ready to accept my apologies and recognize the steps we made for future generations to protect them. I hope you can one day find forgiveness and peace. Feel free to have any last words, for I will not respond to any further attacks as to my character today based upon those actions as a youth. 
Should you desire a healthy adult conversation as to the past, I'm open to helping you through the acceptance and growth that many of us faced and have dealt with. If you have not done so already, I may suggest reaching out to, and it's a blank, and lean out and lean on her for guidance as one closer to your age who within the family has gone through this with us. I'm not sure your relationship with Aunt Blank or your mother, but I suggest leaning on them as well for they experienced much of the same in their youth. Sincerely, Jared. And I must admit, this is the most narcissistic, sadistic thing I have ever read. Jared, it doesn't matter how old you are. Now, based on what I looked up, at this particular time, you were between the ages of 16 and 17. Okay, you didn't have a driver's license, so you was not 12. But even if you were 12, Jared, your actions were wrong. You were wrong, period. It doesn't matter how old you were. You're wrong. Now, I most definitely had to add this side note, and this makes it even worse. Now, the names are blurred out, so you guys get that. The person that he refers to as blank would be my cousin blank and one of his previous victims prior to me. He refers me to her so that way she could help me learn how to forgive him. Not to mention unprovoked by me, she contacted me a few days after these emails happened and has tried to convince me, but all of this is not as bad as I see it. Wow. This is unbelievable. I do plan to cover more content regarding the situation because it really goes deep. And I really think everyone should be aware of the sick, sadistic person that Jared is. And it, it's very hard, you guys, because, I mean, I was a very big fan of AWP. And like I said, the work that they have done was phenomenal. But this sadistic individual, I mean, the world doesn't have a place for individuals like that. I mean, it's just not right. And to all SA survivors out there, it's never too late to come forward with your story. We love you. We support you. You guys, we stand strong. But I'm curious to know what your thoughts and opinions are regarding the situation. Please leave your thoughts and comments in the comments below. Please remember to be respectable. Everyone is entitled to their own thoughts and opinions. And until next time.